He came to power in a time of great peril, son of the royal line of Rohan. Strong and mighty, his name would live on in the history of Middle-earth as one of the great kings of the Mark. Today on Nerd of the Rings, we celebrate the recent news of the animated film War of the Rohirrim by covering the life and travels of Helm Hammerhand, the ninth king of Rohan. Fair warning, there's bound to be spoilers for the new movie, as well as the 60-year-old book that it's based on. Helm is born in 2691 of the Third Age to his father, King Gram of Rohan. During the reign of Helm's grandfather, Deor, it was discovered that the Dunlendings, a group of men who previously allied with Sauron against the men and elves of Eriador, had taken over Isengard. They did not, however, occupy the Tower of Orthanc, as it remained locked to them. The Dunlendings did possess the Circle of Isengard, which itself was a formidable barrier to invasion. For many years, through the reign of both Deor and Gram, Rohan would be in conflict with the Dunlendings. Gram dies in 2741, at the age of 73, leaving Helm to ascend to the throne at the age of 50. The conflict with the Dunlendings to the north would continue into Helm's reign. A short time into his rule, a man who was descended both from the Dunlendings and of Rohan's fifth king, would cause trouble for Helm. This man, named Freka, has lands on both sides of the Adorn River in the West March, not far from Isengard and the Gap of Rohan. There, Freka builds a stronghold and ignores Helm's summons to attend councils in Edoras. Finally, in 2754, Freka comes to a council in Edoras with a host of men, demanding that Helm's daughter be married to his son, Wolf. In response, Helm says, You have grown big since you were last here, but it is mostly fat, I guess. Then Freka fell in a rage and reviled the king, and said this at the last, Old kings that refuse a proffered staff may fall on their knees. Helm answered, Come, the marriage of your son is a trifle. Let Helm and Freka deal with it later. Meanwhile, the king and his council have matters of the moment to consider. When the council was over, Helm stood up and laid his great hand on Freka's shoulder, saying, The king does not permit brawls in his house, but men are freer outside. And he forced Freka to walk before him out from Edoras into the field. Now, Dunlending, said the king, you have only Helm to deal with, alone and unarmed. But you have said much already, and it is my turn to speak. Freka, your folly has grown with your belly. You talk of a staff. If Helm dislikes a crooked staff that is thrust on him, he breaks it. So, with his bare hand, Helm kills Freka and earns the name Hammerhand. He declares Freka's followers to be the enemies of Rohan, but the line of Freka would not go quietly. A few years later, in 2758, these men return with a great force of Dunlendings and Wolf commanding them. Helm meets them in battle at the crossings of Eisen, but is defeated and driven back to the Suthburg. As they make their way to the doors of the Suthburg, Helm's son Haleth is slain. There, the survivors would hold out during a prolonged siege by the host of Dunlendings. Meanwhile, with the king trapped, Wolf captures Edoras, placing himself on the throne in Medusel while Helm's remaining son, Hama, was pinned in with his father at the Suthburg, Helm's nephew, Freilof, fled with a group of Rohirrim to Dunharrow. November of that year brought what would come to be known as the Long Winter, an extremely cold winter that would cover the lands of Eriador, Dunland, and Rohan, and last until March of the following year. Now for those wondering where Gondor was during this time, this winter, along with corresponding battles with the Corsairs of Umbar, prevented the Southern Kingdom from aiding their Northern allies. As the long winter drags on, the food supplies in the Suthburg begin to run low. Helm's son, Hama, goes against his father's commands and leads a group to fight their way through their enemies to find food. However, this group is lost in a snowstorm and are never seen again. With his son spent, Helm grows fierce and gaunt, 
Famine and grief lead the king to go on missions of his own. He would leave the Suthberg alone, clad in white, stalking like a snow troll into the camps of his enemies, slaying men with his bare hands. The Dunlendings come to believe that if the king did not find food, he would eat the men themselves. At the outset of each of his trips, Helm blows his great horn, which echoes in the deep, leading the Suthberg to be named the Hornburg. Hearing the echoes of his great horn, Helm's enemies would be struck with such tremendous fear that rather than gathering to kill him, they would flee. But finally, Helm too would meet his end. One night, men heard the horn blowing, but Helm did not return. In the morning, there came a sun gleam, the first for long days, and they saw a white figure standing still on the dike, alone, for none of the Dunlendings dared come near. There stood Helm, dead as a stone, but his knees were unbent. Yet men said that the horn was still heard at times in the deep, and the wraith of Helm would walk among the foes of Rohan and kill men with fear. The long winter finally breaks in March 2759, and with it, Freyloff, Helm's nephew, would make his move. He comes down from Dunharrow with a small company of desperate men and charges into Edoras. He comes to the very halls of Meduseld, taking Wolf by surprise and slaying him. Thus, the kingdom of Rohan is reclaimed. Freyloff, the sister son of King Helm, is crowned the 10th king of Rohan. His line, the second line of kings, would last until the death of Theoden, 260 years later. As for Helm, his body is brought from the Hornburg and laid in the ninth mound outside Edoras. Upon the grave of Helm Hammerhand, the white symbol Muna would grow most thickly so that it would seem to be covered in snow. Not only does Freyloff reclaim the kingdom and bury his uncle, but he would also drive the Dunlendings from Isengard near the end of 2759. That very year, Rohan would receive a visitor, a wizard, Saruman the White. He comes bearing gifts and speaks great praise of the valor of the Rohirrim. Relieved by the possibility of having an ally to their northern borders, Freyloff agrees with Baron, the steward of Gondor, and welcomes Saruman to take up residence in Orthanc. But over long years, Saruman would weave his own designs and wield the Palantir which he had sought in the fortress. His friends and servants he drew then from all who hated Gondor and Rohan, whether men or other creatures more evil. The gorge where Helm Hammerhand had met his end would one day prove vital in Rohan's survival. The gorge that would come to bear his name, Helm's Deep. If you're like me, you're beyond excited about this new War of the Rohirrim animated film. Be sure to let me know what you're most looking forward to seeing in the comments. Also, if you enjoyed the artwork in this video, be sure to check the artists in the description and visit them online to purchase prints of their great work for yourself. I want to say a special thanks to my dragon, elf, and wizard level supporters, including Tom DeBombadil19, Gail Elizabeth, Jim Limber Davis, Sky Carcass, Salim Rahman, Smorzerk, Zetrok, Gimokad, Grand Strategy Nerd, Chief40123, Dark Haired One, Brig Taylor, and Debbie. Thanks so much for watching and subscribing, and we'll see you next time on Nerd of the Rings.